What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Zoe. No, it is off DFS here, bringing that NBA slate breakdown for the three game NBA slate. After having a day full of games yesterday, we had 11 games yesterday, covered that yesterday in a pretty big video. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy that content. You guys were able to make a little bit of money. I dropped cores for all three main slates that they had up yesterday, starting at 1 p.m. all the way up until uh, the regular main five game slate last night. So hopefully you guys did cash out and were able to cash that. Uh, if you guys are looking for the cores and stuff like that, make sure you guys check the link down in the description below for the Patreon. I posted everything up there, player pool and the cores. So hopefully you guys were able to make some money along with what I went over in the stream. If you guys are enjoying the content, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos that I put out and drop a like on the video because it lets me know that you guys are truly enjoying what I am saying and all that good jazz. Um, yesterday, day full of sports, man. We had a NFL yesterday, of course, and then the, the long slate of NBA games. That first NBA game, uh, the NBA got to do something about these blowouts, man. Um, the, the Hawks. The Hawks literally had a 30-plus point lead going into the half. And the fact that the Spurs struggled against the Hawks to score 30, I want to say they scored like 39 in the first half. That was ridiculous. That was sad. Truly sad. And on national TNT TV, <coughs> that was bad. I, I, I stopped watching the game because I was getting pissed off watching it. But um, the play that we did call out at the beginning of the stream, I said uh, about Wemby for his blocks and steals. As soon as I seen that up there, 3.5, he had that in the first quarter. His first run, his first five-minute run, the boy had got that, man. Easy day. Finished the day with seven stocks. Uh, really great, really cool. Uh, one of the things that I'm actually doing, uh, when you guys sign up, you guys do join us inside Discord. I have started a um, my account over there on Chalkboard. I'm trying to go ahead and just build a bankroll over there on Chalkboard. Uh, diversify besides just always uh, relying on price picks because, as you do know, price picks, lines bump. You kind of miss out on the value. On Chalkboard, you get to adjust the, the lines and stuff like that, which I did that yesterday and uh, cashed out on my first slip that I, I went ahead and I put in uh, to to truly start the challenge of building my bankroll and money over there so if you guys are looking for that that is a discord exclusive uh currently right now but if you take the list of props that i do put out because i do put out a small list of props that i'm actually on for the day um if you take those over there on the patreon then you can still you know participate and do it just you would have to make your own parents and stuff like that all right um sorry for your lost eagle fans and uh sorry for your lost Steelers. i know you guys didn't really believe that you were gonna win I would hope you didn't believe that you were going to win going against the Bills. I mean, duh. Going over, looking at the slate. Um, like I said, three-game slate, small slate. One of these teams is on a back-to-back. -back. Suns didn't play yesterday. Kings didn't play yesterday. I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, two of these teams. Uh, 76ers played yesterday. Joel B came back and was a force, of course, as always, uh, playing yesterday. But the biggest thing that we got to worry about is the whole starting lineup for the Denver Nuggets, our game time decision, which I don't understand. This Everybody's sick. He's questionable with this heel. So Jokic, Aaron Gordon, heel, Michael Porter Jr. knee, KCP back, Jamal Murray leg, all popped up on Monday evening's injury report, likely symbolizing maintenance for Denver's key contributors. Whether this translates to Lowe's management in Tuesday's game is unclear, but Jokic is coming off a full 33-minute workload in Sunday's win over Indy. Um, unless this is the front end of a back-to-back, -back, let's let's do a deep dive. Let's look. Give me the full scoreboard. We're going to go ahead. This is some great uh, recording right here, guys. So, looking at tomorrow's slate, is Denver on the front end of a back-to-back? -back? No. They're not. That's weird. That's weird to put all your plays on the injury report. Right now, the spread is a three-point spread in favor of the 76ers. So, uh, going with what Vegas tells us, and I, I tend to do this whenever we have stuff like this pop up, they're going to play. This is just bullshit, whatever the hell they wanted to put out or some crap. Maybe mind games to mess with 76ers, but I would fully expect all these guys to play. If not, maybe one of them might miss, but I'm going to fully go with today's slate and plan. Hey, Denver Nuggets, they're playing today's slate. Don't know why everybody's on the injury report, but that is still kind of weird and wonky that um all of your starting five is on the injury report. Crazy. Um, but pay attention to that news right there. Over here for the 76ers, unless they decide to rest Joel Embiid on this back-to-back, that would be the only thing I want to pay attention to over here. Other than that, JoJo, he should be good to go uh, in this matchup going up against uh, the Joker. I would not expect for him to miss. Uh, for the Kings, definitely do want to know if Keegan Murray is going to be in or out. If he's going to be out, then we could see some other players slide into the starting lineup. Maybe Sasha. I doubt they would put Trey Lyles or anything like that. Or maybe they could slide. I doubt they put slide Harris Martins down to the four. But um, the Kings, they do some crazy weird things. So there's no telling what the Kings might do right there in that uh, instance for the Suns. No news to report over there. OKC, okay, I want to keep an eye on this. Uh, as you can see, 
Um, Roto Wire, they have Shea Gray right there. And for good reason, uh, last night, you could see it in the game. I watched the game, watched most of the game until it was just kind of out of hand. I could tell we weren't going to win. Um, he was gimpy. Very much was gimpy. You could see it in in his in his gap while he was running up and down the court. You could see it whenever he was trying to get to his regular moves and stuff like that. It just was not a regular Shea game. So that knee is definitely bothering him. I would wouldn't be surprised if they were to sit him out on this back end of a back to back. Would not be. It is a, a long week for us. We do have uh, three games this week, uh, three more games this week, including this game for the Clippers. So they definitely could rest him here and um, give him an extra day off to to go ahead and get that knee just right. Uh, I don't think there's any need, honestly to push him. We got a pretty good record. Uh, over there in the west uh, i don't care second as long as you say first and second that's pretty good but um something i want to pay attention to right here over here for them and then over here for the los angeles clippers biggest thing over here is that zubak is going to be out so we're going to have daniel thesis statement inside of the starting lineup again for them and then um plumley is also back so I would pay attention to the starting lineup for the Clippers because if they were to actually start Plumlee, I would love Plumlee more than uh, Thice because I definitely think Plumlee could give Chet the business if he was actually put in the starting lineup. Uh, Thice, he, he could do a little something, something, but I'm not too concerned uh, with him being in the starting lineup. So uh, that's really kind of the injury report. Going over to the actual slate for us to go ahead and break this down. Over here on DraftKings, if you guys don't not got an account and you want one, check the link down in the description below so you guys can get that deposit match bonus and join me over here on the King. I'm um, definitely appreciate it this is the site that honestly i rock for a lot of my sports play mma everything over here on um on DraftKings. so definitely something that you guys should check out yourself as well all right so biggest thing if all these plays were to be out we'll, we'll play the hypothetical if they were to be out or if say murray was to be out or something like that then reggie jackson gets like the biggest boost ever out of everybody over here on this team that's only if um, Murray is going to be out because we know he'll slide back into the starting lineup. Uh, he's going to have all the usage, go out there and score. And sitting at 3-9, that's not a bad price tag at all whatsoever uh, for him right there. Now, if everyone's going to be in, of course, this is going to be pretty much a battle of the MVPs and Joker going up against uh, Joel Embiid, as I said before. And I said it yesterday, opposing centers have actually done pretty well going up against Joel Embiid or whoever else they have out there. Paul Reed, they've done pretty good going up against the 76ers. we just seen Shangun. And Shangun is Joker like with the assist, the rebounding, and the scoring that he can do. He went out there and he dropped 43 points, 25 fantasy points in that game yesterday. So, um, pretty much that should tell you right there, it's not a bad spot. Uh, Sabonis, another center who is Joker like, went out there, he dropped 36 fantasy points. Uh, Oneko Kongwu, 38. Now, granted, of course, this was without me, this was going up against Paul Reed, but nonetheless, this is definitely a triple double upside for your boy, the Joker. Dropped at least 45 plus in all of his games, sitting at 11 5. Um, definitely worth paying up and spending up and going ahead and getting up there uh, for him if you actually want to rock and go with that. Outside of that, uh, you could definitely go to his running mate, go to Jamal Murray at A3. Don't hate it, don't mind it. There's another guard I'd rather spend up for uh, on today's slate, but um, long as he's not going to still be on that minute limit that they did say that he was on. Looks like he played 36 minutes the last game going up against the uh, the against Indy, so uh, I can see him hopefully getting about 36, 37 minutes here. I don't hate, don't mind the matchup at all for him. Definitely would be another spot. I I could go uh, right back there uh, to that, and then. If Michael Porter Jr. is in, and hopefully the shot can actually fall, I don't hate uh, MPJ. Definitely doesn't mind it. If Gordon is to miss, then, of course, you're going to want to go to one of these other axillary pieces because that's going to be quite a bit of a usage and everything that pops up for uh, all these other guys. Really, just these Q tags, man. That's just really just throwing a lot of stuff off. Hopefully, we can possibly get them at lower ownership just because of the Q tag popping up. And um, last but not least, I got to talk about my boy uh, KCP. Definitely don't hate, don't mind him as a, a possible value play that you can get to uh, on the slate. Going to probably draw that uh, Kelly Oubre Jr. defense, but we do know he's a pretty good uh, defender himself. And he can somehow, some way, stuff the stat sheet and get there for you. Uh, Reggie Jackson, probably my favorite value play over there on the Denver Nuggets, if I had to go with anything. He's playing roughly about 20 minutes a game anyway, um, with or without Jamal Murray being on that minute limit thing that they got him uh, working through. So definitely is going to be worth it still at the end of the day on to the other side looking at the 76ers um honestly back to backs kind of scare me especially when it comes down to Embiid I'm not too sure if I even want to spend up and go here uh to him I'm probably gonna get in get different I'm not gonna end up going with either one of these uh big centers uh here in this matchup I'm probably just gonna sit back from a fan's perspective and just enjoy the game itself but if you want to go with him he has played in back-to-backs and he's done decent in his back-to-backs as you can see Detroit one night, uh, Charlotte the next night, 66, 70 fantasy points. Of course, two weak teams against the center position. Um, but again, you actually can go up against Nikola uh, Jokic and opposing centers have done decent going up against him. His defense over there on that end has gotten a little bit better over the last couple of games, but still uh, definitely susceptible. 
Uh, Tyrese Maxey, on the other hand, definitely with Embiid, plays good. Without Embiid, plays good as well. 40 fantasy point in that last game. Don't mind coming out here to Maxey. Uh, as we have seen, opposing point guards, they've done so-so going up against the um, the uh, Denver Nuggets. Just all depends on which Maxey we're going to actually be able to come out here and get. Plays pretty good at home. Don't hate, don't mind it if you want to spend up right there. Again, I have some other uh, point guards or guards that I would rather spend up for uh, versus any of these guys inside of this game. It's a small slate. You got to take your stand somewhere and where you want to actually uh, plant your flag. Uh, outside of that, of course, you can always go with Kelly Oubre Jr. Like I said, I personally feel like he plays better with Joel Embiid. Uh, only 26 minutes yesterday in that matchup, 17.5 fantasy points. Just really didn't get too much going out there. Um, but I still don't mind going right back to him. Again, of course, let down yesterday. And we know how it is whenever a player lets down, comes back the next day, normally balls out. And then everyone's going to be off from this like, dang, I should have went with him. Um, you know, things like that. So Kelly O, don't mind. Don't hate going right back to him right here in the spot. And then uh, outside of that, Nick Batum, going to be some value play right here. Uh, sitting at 5K, he's going to go out there, play about 25-ish minutes. And as you can see, stat sheet stuffer can definitely go out there and get you at least 20 fantasy points, um, even on a bad day. And I, I do I do actually like him for the upside, as we have seen opposing power force have done pretty decent going up against the Denver Nuggets. Aaron Gordon, he's a good defender in his own right, but normally they do put him put him on the best wing uh, player out there. And I would imagine that would be um, he's going to be guarding uh, Tobias Harris or um, um, Jesus, uh, Kelly Uber Jr., one of those two guys. So Nick Batum, corner um, corner shooter. Uh, definitely go out there and knock down some of those shots, some rebounds, and can play decent defense out there. So don't hate, don't mind it uh, right there for me. Now, going over to a game that I actually have a bit more appeal uh, for me, and that's going to be the Suns taking on the um, Sacramento Kings. The biggest thing in this game is that if the Kings come out here and just don't Kang, they have to play decently. Uh, the, the Suns have actually been doing pretty good over the last couple games. Um, of course, finally has the full core, full allotment. We're actually finally getting to see that full rotation, everything for them. I don't hate, don't mind any of these guys uh, over here. But um, Darren Fox in that last game, of course, went to o OT, but against Milwaukee. Looks like we might be getting Fox coming back, coming uh, coming around. Uh, dropped 47 fantasy points in 43 minutes, over a fantasy point per minute. Of course, the game did go to OT. Don't hate, don't mind it. They did lose that game uh, to the Damian Lillard. Dame time uh knock down that shot that three was crazy of course if you ask paul george he will tell you that was a bad shot um so nonetheless i do like Darren fox 9k for the pay up i'm not scared of devin booker defense not scared of bradley bill defense definitely do feel like um fox should be able to go out here and give it to him we just seen scoot scoot henderson scoot for the portland trash cans went out here and he dropped 61 point 75 fantasy points against the phoenix suns and they didn't arrest anybody <laughs> they didn't they, they played so i uh, definitely do like the the upside of matchup if we can get a slashing fox a fox that's out there knocking down his threes maybe we can get a little bit of playmaking from him um as well i do know sabonis he averages less assists on the road than he does at home so i'm um, definitely the upside is there for fox it's just all gonna depend on if his shot and everything is gonna actually finally uh be falling for him here in the spot but i really do like the upside for him now um the other play that i really do like over here on this side and granted he is a bit much, and I, I really don't like spending this much for a bench player, but uh, especially because he's 6'5", but he is playing over 25 minutes a game, and when he gets out there and he's hot and he's honestly knocking it down, they are going to run Malik Monk a pretty decent run, so I don't hate, don't mind him. And if uh, Keegan Murray, if he actually plays, I do like the upside for him here in the spot. Only played 19 minutes against Milwaukee, left the game early. Of course, that was with that hip, so I um, definitely do want to know if he's going to be in or out. If he's in, I do like the upside that he possibly could bring um, here. In regards to just just the upside uh, pretty much but if he's going to be out again i wouldn't be i wouldn't be surprised if they actually go ahead and put trey Lyles. as we've seen he did come in in the uh last game against milwaukee played 33 minutes in the spot of um keegan dropped 22.25 fantasy points if they start trey Lyles, definitely value play 4800 might as well go ahead uh you could definitely probably see some more minutes for uh shasha maybe um out there or really they, they really don't trust too much off of this bench if i'm being honest um probably trail would really just be the only person i would trust um as far as i could throw him over there off the bench chris Arate, mm, only unless kevin Hurd was to be out i wouldn't really go there uh so honestly over here it's just honestly gonna be fox if, if i mess with anything fox Trey Lyles, malik monk if you're feeling frisky for gpps keegan murray if he's actually in i do like the upside form and then uh sabonis would be like your deep gpp play but i really don't like him uh, here in the spot going over to the other side on the suns uh, the upside, like I said, is there, man. You got Kevin Durant playing pretty good. 
not having any ill effect to the fact that you have the book, the fact that you have Bradley Beal. He's still going to go out there. He's going to get his. He's going to score. Uh, he's going to rebound. He's going to do what he got to do. Uh, going out here, Devin Booker, the playmaking, the upside, it's there for him. I, I like what he's going out there doing. Uh, 7, 5, 5, 8, 10 assists for the starting point guard. 34, 31, 20, 24, 20. Uh, so the scoring, everything is going to be there for him. Don't hate, don't mind either one of these two guys as a playup option. Again, if you don't want to mess with Fox, you want to go over here to D-Book. Don't hate, don't mind that at all. Uh, but I do like Fox, of course, because I feel like he's going to have the weaker uh, matchup in regards to the defense and what, what's going to be thrown at him. And then as a run back on the other side, I do like going to Kevin Durant. He did let down in that last game against Portland, only 35.75 fantasy points. And again, if this can actually stay close, we could see him put up Giannis-like numbers um, or something like that. Giannis just dropped 63 fantasy points, and Giannis didn't have a good shooting day uh, going up against the, the Kings in that game either. So I really do like the upside that we could possibly get for uh, KD. But if you want to get some value, because he has been on, been waiting for it, and he's shown it over the last couple games, uh, Bradley Beal, the scoring is there. We know he can also stuff the stat sheet as well. I don't hate that. Don't mind that, especially at 7-4. That is a decent value for a starting uh, shooting guard who can go out there and also play make and things like that. Um, outside of that, if you want to get uh, frisky, funky with it, Nurk, not too interested in, interested him in him here uh, in this matchup, but... Uh, the upside definitely could be there. I do feel like we do have some value centers on the slate. Of course, small slate, but talking about the centers over there in the Clippers, on the Clippers side, going up against Thunder, that's a great spot for those centers. I don't really see any need to pay up for or, um, you know, go too crazy on some of the other centers here on the slate. So mainly it's just going to be the main guys over here for him, KD, Book, Bill, KD being my favorite one. And then if you want to get Frisky and you know uh, he's going to go ahead and be pretty much safe of course always in my eyes jared allen uh not Jared allen grayson allen i really feel like he can do no wrong i know a lot of people hate on the dude but uh pretty consistent for me whenever i do play him and he will make my player pool today i, I do like the upside that he can actually bring now over here for the thunder like i said we do need to know if shea is going to be in or out that is the biggest thing to me um this was not a shea game at all 39.75 fantasy points in 34 minutes that's that's not shea shea goes out there he drops 40 plus uh, 45 fantasy point type games if sj is going to be out then of course we're probably gonna have, not even probably we're gonna have to look at chet we're gonna have to look at Jalen Williams, Josh Giddy, um, I've told you guys before, Kaysan Wallace will slide into the starting lineup if uh, any of the, the three main uh, guards were to miss. Uh, shoot, even if uh, J-Dub was to miss, they go ahead and they put Kaysan in there and they slide Giddy down to the four would literally be how they are. Um, you got, you also do have to realize this is a pretty big lineup. I know they don't look that big whenever you actually see them on the court. Shea is 6'6". Six, six. Um, Jalen Williams is 6'6". Six, six. Josh Giddy is 6'5", 6'6". Six, six, six. <laughs> so it is a big lineup. The shortest person out there in the starting lineup is Lou Dort, who is uh, I want to say he's 6'4", if I'm not mistaken. Um, but none of these guys, they, they don't look as big as what they actually are, which is uh, what's crazy about, about looking at my team. It's probably just because they're just so young. But um, nonetheless, if SJ was to miss, then all these other guys are going to get a boost. Chet, J-Dub, uh, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, um, and then Kassan for value. Uh, really, I'm going to have to see if Shea pops up on the injury report. Right now, I'll say the spread is sitting at a 6.5. So that tells me that Shea probably right now is leaning towards being in. Um, if he plays, this is his former team. I don't hate, don't mind going to SGA as a, a spin up option that you can go to. Uh, as we have seen, opposing point guards, they've done decent going up against the, uh, the, the Clippers. If you subtract Mike Conley and Desmond Bain having shit games, uh, quickly he went out there, he dropped 41.50 uh, fantasy points, and then Devin Booker dropped 46 fantasy points uh, going up against him. And if you look at Shea's history going up against the Clippers, already played him once this season, 32 minutes, he dropped 59 fantasy points against them. And then, uh, all last season, not one game below 40 fantasy points against them at all whatsoever. So, so the upside is definitely there. Ever since he's been traded away from them, he has dropped at least 40 plus fantasy points on their head every single time. So um, like I said, the upside is definitely going to be there for him as well. But um, I will let you guys know in the notes that I do put up on the on the uh, Patreon if anything was to change or if you guys need to look uh, anywhere else over there for um, that side of that. Now going over to the uh, Los Angeles Clippers side, like I said, we have value in regards to the fact that uh, Thies is going to be uh, starting at that center position. Now he only played 22 minutes, didn't have the biggest uh, pop up of a game uh, over there, 44, um, 4400. I want to pay attention because I honestly feel like they could possibly start Plumley in his spot. Uh, both of them, of course, they're going to split the center position time. Uh, Plumley he played 16 minutes, dropped 13.75 fantasy points. Even if Plumlee's only going to play 16, maybe close to 20 minutes, I still might take a chance on Mason Plumlee over Thies. Just simply because Thies, he can rebound, he can block some shots, things like that. But I kind of feel like the upside is just a little bit limited in regards to what he brings versus what uh, Plumlee can bring. And I think they can exploit, especially a player like SGA can exploit uh, Thies out there on the defensive side. So um, definitely something to consider. A GPP option coming down off of Thies, going with uh, Plumlee. Because he's going to play at least, 
at least about 15 to 16 minutes. He's going to play that, especially if this game stays close. He's, he's going to at least get that. And the upside for him to at least go out there and drop 25 uh, fantasy points at 3,700 is pretty good value. Um, at least I, I just personally think that that's just just how my mind is working but I don't mind these at all really great spot for him as well especially if you can go out here and give me some blocks and give me some steals um, I would love that definitely just knock down your shots rebound because we do know the Thunder is a weak rebounding team you definitely you have right there um, outside of that looking at them of course the big three over here for them Kawhi Leonard Paul George uh, James Harden it all just depends on which one you, you you're, you're feeling uh, what the ownership is looking like I don't hate or mind any of the big three over here for them, I'd say the best one that has the best matchup is going to be Kawhi Leonard. Opposing power fours have done pretty decent going up against the Thunder. I uh, don't hate, don't mind that he's been pretty consistent over his last several games. Um, upside definitely is going to be there for him. Now, Paul George, he is coming off of a bad game. Went out there, he shot sh poor, piss poor shit. Five of 19 from the field in 42 minutes, uh, 27 fantasy points. This is definitely a get back, bounce back spot for him. Uh, no revenge narrative here for Paul George. His main team that you would actually want to take revenge for would be Indy. Um, none of that against OKC. That's that's not even narrative. If you want to go with narrative, Russ, Russ, yes, he can play well. He can play great. Um, the biggest thing that is notable though is the fact that Russ played 29 minutes in the last game with no Zubak. I was reading some things, especially on Clipper Nation and and how they were talking about it, and they did say that um, if you look at it, the issue wasn't necessarily all the starters being able to mesh in the starting lineup with, when it was Russ, Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and Zubak. The biggest issue was Russ and Zubak playing on the court at the same time. Because as you do know, Russ can go in there and he can get those rebounds. Russ can still dish the rock very well and uh, get those assists. He is still king of the triple doubles. He is. Literally shows it. 29 minutes. 46.5 fantasy points. He can be a liability on the scoring end. But the heart, the effort, the fact that he can make plays for you and keep you inside of a game, it's clear as day there. Um, so... It is a value to get Russell Westbrook at that 5'9". I do love the upside that we can definitely get for him. Uh, that's really a nice mid-tier option. And then if you want to go with the revenge narrative because he is facing his former team, a bunch of young bucks. I don't hate or mind the upside there uh, for that. Looking at his game logs, the last time that he played the Thunder, um, he dropped in 30 minutes, 36 fantasy points. Honestly, since he's been gone away, he hasn't dropped anything less than 30 fantasy points going up against us now that I look at it. So the upside's there. Definitely don't hate or mind uh, playing playing Russ at all. Shit, man. First game that he played against us in 38 minutes, that man dropped 70. 70 fantasy points. Man. Boy, I wish that we still had Russ, man. Russ, Russ, bro. Favorite player. Favorite player in the, in the NBA is Russell Westbrook. All right, there. All right. Um, Outside of that, really not going to mess with too much. Uh, Terrence, man, deep value play that you can mess with. Powell, uh, he also got some pretty decent burn and run. With there not being no Zubak, don't hate him as another uh, cheap play that you can go to. Of course, it's a small slate. Um, like I said, in regards to my build, I really do like this uh, Sacramento Kings and um, Suns game. Kind of to me is the favorite of all of them. Uh, starting my build, I'm really looking at building around De'Aaron Fox and Kevin Durant. That's where I, I'm planting my flag on my two studs that I do like the upside for. And then, like I already said, you really do have that value right here at the center position with the Thies or you can go with um, Plumlee as well. Either one of these guys, I do like the upside that we, we can actually get with going with one of them as a value play. And then, um, honestly, shoot, I can give you a full core right now. And then if we uh, go ahead and we bring in the Denver Nuggets, depending on whether or not if Jamal Murray's in or out, honestly, don't hate, don't mind it. But Reggie Jackson at 3-9, um, really great value. And I just talked up Russ. So uh, I'll let you guys go from there. But I do like the upside that everything that I'm looking at right now with this lineup that I just threw together uh, for you guys. Hopefully you guys uh, have pretty good luck on today's slate. Um, with that being said, it's your boy Zo. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any the videos. Check out the Patreon. Link for that is down in the description below. With that being said, good luck.